Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. It's Vidya. Today I have part two of the Mandelbulb tutorial series. In this episode, we will take a look at combining different fractal formulas. Let's begin this tutorial with taking a look at the different types of hybrids. Mandelbulb has three methods for combining formulas. We have the alternate, the interpolate, and the DE combinant types of hybrids. Each one of these three modes gives you different results and allows for different combinations. The alternate being the most common allows six formulas. Each formula is alternated with the next. So it's the most standard method of combining. Next, we have the interpolate type of hybrid. This only uses two formulas, and formula one is interpolated in each iteration with formula two. So interpolate gives us a completely different combination method from the alternate and the DE combinant. It's important to keep in mind that interpolate can only be used with escape time formulas, which are the 3D, 3DA, 4D, and 4DA formulas. Now the alternate type of hybrid, in very much the same way, can only be used with the escape time formulas and the escape time transformations. Moving on to DE combinant, the final option, this again allows for six formulas to be combined and formula one is DE combinated with alternate hybrid of formulas two to six. So in DE combinant, formula one pronounces itself the most. And what's very interesting about this type of hybrid is it allows us to mix DIFS shapes with escape time formulas. In addition to mixing DIFS shapes with escape times, we can also just use escape times to get varied results than we would with the alternate type of hybrid. So let me show you a little example here. In formula one, I have the integer power. In formula two, I'm going to add the amazing box. So let's go ahead and calculate and go to the navigator to view this further. I'm gonna to go to my amazing box here, play with the scale, and you can see we've got these two formulas working together. Now additionally, to further explore these formulas and the way they combine together, we have these two arrow keys, which will allow us to move formulas from slot to slot. So if I change the amazing box with the integer power, go back to the navigator and insert the parameter, it will give us a different result. Now I can adjust the iterations, go back onto the scale, and the min r. Now I'm not gonna do too much tweaking with this, uh, I just want you to see here how formulas look when combined using the alternate type of hybrid. Now, if we go to DE combinant using the same two formulas, go back into the navigator and insert the parameter, I'll have to do a little tweaking here to bring it about. But this produces a completely different result. Actually, when using these two formulas, we can see on the DE combinant, they're both present independently of each other. Now, with the DE combinant, we have different DE combinant modes. We can go from min to max, to invert max, to min in, to min n lin, to mix. The primary one I want you to take a look at when combining just escape times is min n lin. This will combine in a nonlinear function. And when I insert the parameter here and play with the scale, the formulas do begin to mix. Now it's a very interesting 
way that they do this. Um, but I would say use your imagination, get creative. And really, when I discovered that you could use escape times with DE Combinant to get different results, it really inspired me to look for new discoveries. So again, I'm just showing you all the different methods, all the different ways to the center. There's a bunch. There's tons of ways we can get there. Um, very cool. Okay. Let's check out the interpolate really quickly. Being, I hate to say this is at the bottom of my list of types of hybrids, but it's only in that sense that I've explored it the least. Um, does that mean it's any less interesting? No, not at all. In fact, let's go to the navigator, insert the parameter. And this is one I would highly recommend experimenting with because again, like I said, I think it's a little bit less explored, maybe just due to the rather simplicity of it. But the main magic here is with the iterations. Now you'll notice that the iterations aren't going up uh, by whole values, they go up by decimals from here. And that's just because each iteration makes such a great impact that this option just allows you to see it in different steps. Additionally, like we did with the other types of hybrids, I can use the arrow key to switch the formulas. And by going back in here, we can find just a slightly different result. Now, maybe this isn't the best example, but it's going to help you get the idea. Now that we've sort of gotten a feel for how different formulas combine with the different types of hybrids, let's take a look at some different shapes that can be found within Mandible 3D. Now I don't really know what to call these shapes. I guess they're rather like tops or chess pawns. But this has become one of my favorite shapes out of the program, out of all the math. Um, it's, it's just fascinating to me. And this, these particular shapes were discovered, or I, I, I guess really created using the invispherical, folding into power, polyfold sim, and Benazai 3 to the power of 2. Also a quintic in Formula 5. Now this is used, this is uh, made possible using the alternate type of hybrid. And I love these top shapes because there's so many variations of them. This is just one. Uh, if we change the folding into power to a quad, a quaternion, and go to the navigator, insert parameter, we just we get a whole nother variation and again you can just see why this is one of my favorite shapes i just think it's you know and a lot of this symmetrical magic is happening due to the polyfold sim polyfold sim is an ads okay so polyfold sim is not a fractal formula it's a fractal transformation and that's what's giving us this mirrored sort of folding effect. But we can change this out as well to further our variances. Let's take a look at another, um, another top that we have. This one, okay, so here, perfect example, instead of using a polyfold sim, I'm using a flip C. And instead of a quaternion, I'm using a tricorn. So all of these parameters will be available in the description. I figure this is especially useful for people who learn um, from working backwards. I know I certainly did when I was really trying to discover new shapes. A lot of the time I would have to look at other people's work and deconstruct it and work backwards. And that's 
because I don't understand any of the mathematics. I don't know how any of this is possible. So for me, I had to find a way to learn to make it make sense in my brain. And that was working backwards. So that's what I have planned for you guys. Um, in the description, you will find every single one of these parameters available for free download, of course. So please, if you'd like to follow along or tweak these to your liking, you know, sky's the limit, do whatever you want. Okay, so another top sort of variation. Very fun, very fun. Let's take a look at, oh, I actually have one more top variation I could show you guys. I hate to say anything is, you know, my own discovery, but this is a top variation that after a few hours of tweaking and looking, I was able to come across. And to this day, it's one of my favorite discoveries within Mandelbulb. I just, I love how there's this little sun almost in the center and a, and, and a black sphere and a white sphere. It just, it just beautifully encompasses duality in such a interesting figure. So, uh, you know, just another top variation for you to admire. Now this one again, it's using Invispherical, Tricorn, Polyfold Sim, a surf Smooth Fold, that's a mouthful. That is the difference in this one, sort of giving it a different texture to the tops themselves. That's, that's one way you kind of look at it. Formula One is going to be your most pronounced, especially in the alternate hybrid. And then as you get further down the line, these formulas will become more of the texture. So typically I throw, if I ever use a Benazai 3 to the power of 2, it's always at the end because this is more of, this affects the texture. Like if we go into the navigator here, insert the parameter, and go to the Benazai 3 to the power of 2, if I increase this, you'll see the texture of the figure begins to change. Now, I think personally having it set to 1 is the sweet spot for me. It's what gave me that little duality symbol, but turned off as well, it's equally interesting. Let's take a look at another fractal shape. Again, I don't really know what to call these. These are rather like tentacles. Very alien if you ask me. These shapes are made possible using Manger IFS Plus, A Tetra VS2, and Amazing Box. Now, the Manger IFS Plus is not an IFS shape. In fact, it's either a 3D it's either 3D or 3DA. It's a 3DA. Okay, so again, Manger IFS Plus is not a vector. It's an escape time. If it's located in a 3D, 3DA, 4D, or 4DA slot, it's not a vector shape. Okay, so that's just, because that's, that's a little confusing, especially for me at first, but hopefully that clears things up. Let's go into the navigator and sort of deconstruct this a little bit if we can here. So let's see what's making these shapes possible. Well, when you combine the Manger IFS Plus with the A Tetra VS2 and increase the iterations, they grow through the boxes, which is very, very cool because, you know, when you start mixing abstract shapes with more geometrically you know defined shapes in my opinion that's really where some of the magic starts to begin now i can play with the scale and all sorts of things personally this is one of my favorite locations in this world but just as with everything else with tweaking also comes you know flying around and and going deeper because the deeper you go is when 
new things start popping up out of the blue. It's just, it's just incredible. And so I'm a big advocate for exploring and just, you know, just have fun. I mean, that's all this really is, you know, just, just enjoy it. Wow. That's actually a really cool little, if you guys don't mind, I'm going to render this out really quickly. So by this point in the series, we should have a, you know, a, a decent grasp on the different formulas. In my opinion, that's the foundation. You know, if you don't understand the formulas, it's going to be very, very hard to create. Um, so that's why I want this to be the first thing that you guys really get. Now in part three, we're going to be getting into color, lighting, ambience, all the things that really make the fractal images pop. So in part three, we'll be going over that. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. It's been a blast. I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be able to do this, man. I, I love, I love working in Mandelbulb and I'm not the best speaker. I'm not the best teacher. I'm certainly not the best at creating informative videos, but it's something that I enjoy doing and hope to get better at with time. So thank you guys very much for bearing with me and being here, you know, helping me learn because the more I get to teach, the more I get to learn. So, wow, that is beautiful. All right. I'm going to save this really quickly just cause I want to go play with this after the video is over. Let's take a look at a couple more here. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. I did want to show off. Oh, whoops. Perfect. So this is made possible using the DE Combinant. Now, right here, we're viewing a sphere IFS mixed in with this, I can't really, again, I can't really say I've discovered something completely on my own, but I like to think that I came across these rings and uh, they really remind me of an abacus. So I've come to call this formula the eternal abacus made possible using polyfolding, a box platinum, Manger IFS and another Benazai 3 to the power of 2. You're going to see a lot of these in my fractal sets. I love this formula, just always adds a finishing touch, in my opinion. Now, the magic here is with that A box platinum mixing with the Manger IFS. Using the DE Combinant, let's go ahead and break down this set of fractal formulas. So I'm going to go up to the top right hand corner of my formulas tab and I'm going to click reset. Now this will just reset all of my formulas to the default. In formula one, I'm going to add an amazing box. And in formula two, I'm going to add a sphere IFS. Now let's change to the DE combinant mode, making sure that this number corresponds to the folder number with our DIFS. From here, the only other thing I need to do is calculate 3D. I'm going to turn my quality down just a bit and I have post-processing enabled. I'm going to turn a couple of these off as well as, okay, let's see there. Excellent. Now let's go into the navigator tab insert the parameter and from here we'll have to make adjustments to be able to see our sphere alongside our escape time formula. I'm going to go ahead and close out of my navigator momentarily and I would like to show you guys this feature above the formulas tab. We have the rotation tab and the position tab which by default will be compressed. If we expand this window we will get a reset option. By choosing this, 
it will reset our points to zero. Insert the parameter first. If I move away, you'll see the leaf begins to turn red. And then as I get to the center, it becomes a perfect green dot. Now this is useful because a lot of the time it will be very difficult to locate both of the objects at the same time. So from here, now I can adjust the scale, maybe zoom out a little bit. And let's see if I can play with the scale of the sphere. Boom. So now we can see a bunch of spheres coming through. By default, this formula always has extra spheres along with it, I guess, um, or repeating spheres, but it's possible with fine tuning to just solo out a single sphere in the image. Now I'm not gonna do too much tweaking on this because this is one of those things where it just takes lots of time and it depends on what you're going for, really, I mean, you know, this is just all about getting creative and and seeing what you can come what you can come up with. So just make adjustments to your liking. And again, this can be done with several formulas. So if this is something you'd like to explore further, then definitely try it out with more than just two formulas. Now let's go ahead and end off on one more set here and again just another sphere added into an escape time this one took me quite a while to figure it out and to line it all up in fact i'm pretty sure what i had to do was fully reset the position insert the parameter and then i had to find it from here from absolute zero See, we know we're at zero because we have the green circle, dead center. I believe this will be the end of part two. Thank you guys so much for watching. In part three, we're going to be going over color, lighting, ambience, and much more. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of the journey. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, it's been Vidya.